Resizing designs and brilliance is a cinch. Essentials can resize both stitch files and, of course, designs you create within the program. Resizing works best and has the widest range when working with either one of the interactive files or with the built-in lettering. You can also very successfully resize stitch files that you've merged in. So let's create a new document and we'll merge in a stitch file. I'll pick this mouse. This is from my Ragdoll Critters collection and it's a PES file which means it's a stitch file. There he is. He's in a 100 by 100 hoop and if I click on him you will see that his current size is 100 percent. This means that he's at actual size. Now let's make the mouse smaller. See how when he's selected we have these eight black nodes or black handles. If I hover the mouse over one of them you'll see that my cursor changes. So if I click on one of the corners, I can proportionally scale it up and down. If I click at the top or bottom, I can make him taller or shorter. Click on the sides and I can make him fatter or skinnier. So there he is and I have actually ended up scaling him 100.5% up and 74.6% narrower. If I want to take him back to his normal size, I need to unclick the lock proportional box because I've scaled him disproportionately and type in 100 into both of those fields and hit enter and now he's back to his normal size. Let's click the lock again and let's set him back to the center of the hoop. Doing this type of sizing up and down several times and back to normal in other programs can really distort your design. And it's highly unlikely that those other programs won't know the original size once the resizing starts. This won't happen in Essentials. If I know that I need this design to be 3 inches wide, I can switch from millimeters to inches and just type in 3 inches. And the program scales it proportionally to about just about 3 inches wide and now it's 2 and 11 16 inches tall. If I wanted to make him square, I would uncheck that little lock, type in 3 here, and now you can see that he's pretty much square. We can also take him back by doing undo. With a stitch file, I can make this design as small as 50% of its original size. So make sure the lock is clicked and type in 50% and you can see that it's instantly smaller. Now, how well is this going to sew? Well, there's no real guarantee. That all depends on how it was digitized and the level of detail. If you look at these eyes, they're already pretty small. They're likely to turn into little knots at, half, at this half size. Essentials does an amazing job of maintaining design integrity, but you really should test any changes you make before sewing on your project. Now, did you notice that I didn't have to click any button to regenerate the stitches. That's because Essentials is doing all those calculations for you on the fly. Just to show you, I want you to look down here on the status bar. Here you can see the number of stitches and the size. So right now we're at 50%. So let's take it back up to 100. And notice that I now have more stitches and a bigger size. If I take it up to 200%, which is how large you can take a stitch file, we'll see that this is now highlighted in red, which means that it's exceeding my hoop size, and we see the stitch count. If I want to see all of my design in the window, I can zoom to selected. And you can see there he is, one giant mouse. So let's take him back, 100%. So let's review. There are three ways to resize a design. One is visually by dragging the handles. Another way is to type in a value. And the third way is to type in a percentage. And you can do these either independently or so that they all scale together. Essentials always remembers the original size of the design, even if you save the BE file and open it at some future date. So this means that you can always see how much the design has already been scaled and return it to its original size if necessary. And there's no need to remember to click a button to recalculate the stitches after sizing. So let's save our, our design. To save it, we're going to click the Save icon, and we should probably not save it in the original location. Here's a different location 
and I'm just going to call it mouse resized. And there we have it. You want to make sure that you don't save it to the original location and the original name because you'll overwrite your original file. Keep in mind that some designs, most notably cross stitch and laser designs, may not scale well at all. And also, just because Essentials will let you scale a stitch file up 200% and down 50% doesn't guarantee a successful sew out. Much of that is going to depend on how the design was digitized and how well you prepare the fabric for embroidery. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on resizing in Brilliance Essentials. Please check out other videos in this series.